Polly is the kit for Modo that I never intended to create. It is all about polygons and polymorphic operations. First up, we have some new mesh operations. Make polygons. This mesh op works like the direct modeling P command. It accepts vertex or edge selections and creates one or more polygons. With just some vertices, you get a single polygon. You can flip the facing with the flip option. When you create polygons from vertices adjacent to faces, the mesh op tries to match the new polygons to the facing of its neighbors. You can use the mesh op to fill curves, and for complex shapes, you might want to use curve rebuild to get enough points. Linear align. This mesh op is similar to the direct modeling tool of the same name. It accepts an edge selection. This should consist of one or more connected edges with no branches. The mesh op will align the points along the selection to lie on the line between the start and end points. You have control over the weight of the effect and the spacing can either be uniform or nearest point to the line. Radial align. Radial Align is also like the direct modeling tool of the same name. It expects one or more polygon island selections and will align the edge points in a circle. You can control the rotation, radius and offset, as well as the weight of the effect. One difference from the direct modeling equivalent is that the interior points are scaled as well when the radius is adjusted. You can turn off this behavior. Channel bundle and unbundle. These channel modifiers do nothing, but in a useful way. Channel bundle lets you combine up to 10 channels into a single channel, and unbundle reverses the process. This can be useful if you have a crowded schematic and want to transport a bunch of channels from one place to another. By separating the output of the channel bundle modifier, you can teleport or tunnel the data to a remote part of your schematic without any connection clutter. Channel remap. This channel modifier takes a number as input. It will rescale the number from one range, the input, begin to end, to another range, output, begin to end. By default, the mapping is linear, but you can use the gradient to change this to any form you want. Array from Mesh. Lastly, I will look at three related poly operations. These are a little more experimental, so expect changes, especially if you want them. Array from Mesh is similar to the built-in Mesh Data Array but it works slightly differently. When you plug a mesh into array from mesh, it will deliver the positions, the polygon data as an array of arrays of vertex indices, and an array of vertex indices. The latter can be useful if you want to find the indices associated with a selection set. The second thing you can do is examine an arbitrary vertex map. Select the vertex map type, and type in its name, and the modifier will output arrays containing the map values, the polygons associated with the value, this is important for normals and texture coordinates for example, and finally the vertex indices for the map values. Arrays to polygons. This is a mesh op that takes an array of positions and an array of polygons i.e. an array of arrays of vertex indices. It uses this data to construct polygons. In its simplest use case, you can feed the data from array from mesh into arrays to polygons to create a duplicate of your geometry. If this is all you want to do, then you are better off using the built-in merge meshes. However, if you want to manipulate the vertices in some complicated way, this gives you a route. Arrays to VMAP. This is another mesh op which will create a vertex map from input array data. 
If your vertex map has one value per vertex, then a single value array is sufficient. But for things like texture coordinates, you will also need the polygon and vertex index data. Fortunately, you can get these from arrays from mesh. That is Polly as she stands at the moment. Please let me know if this is something that would be useful to you, or if you would like things to behave differently.